Hey, welcome back. In our last air track video, we demonstrated the conservation of momentum in elastic and inelastic collisions. Today, we'll continue by measuring velocities in order to first predict, then experimentally determine acceleration. For that, we'll use a scale, a stopwatch, the glider with a single flag attachment, and the photo gates and timer. Newton's second law of motion states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net forces acting upon it and indirectly proportional to the mass of the object. In other words, heavier things require more force to accelerate, and acceleration means any change in velocity, either its speed or its direction. It's important to note that acceleration is equal to the net force acting upon an object divided by its mass. To verify Newton's second law of motion, we'll use the equation force equals mass times acceleration to predict acceleration of the glider while it's being pulled by a weight bucket. Then compare our prediction to our experimental results. Find the masses of the glider alone and the empty bucket to determine the net force acting on the glider, then record the data. Remember that mass represents the amount of matter in an object and is measured in kilograms. Weight is a force that shows how gravity affects mass and is measured in newtons. Weight is calculated by multiplying mass times acceleration due to gravity, or 9.8 meters per second squared. The sum of all forces, or net force, takes into consideration all of the forces acting on an object. Since the air track provides a nearly frictionless surface for the gliders, and all the other forces in the system are canceled out, the net force will be equal to the weight of the bucket or mass of the bucket times 9.8 meters per second squared. Now we can calculate the expected acceleration for the glider by rearranging the F net equation. F net equals mass of the weight bucket plus mass of the glider times acceleration. So acceleration is equal to F net divided by the mass of the weight bucket plus mass of the glider. When solving for acceleration, we include all of the masses in the system and not just the mass of the glider. Remember, the way to calculate velocity is by taking the difference of position, or delta D, and dividing it by the time interval, or delta T. We're going to attach the photo gates at 60 and 70 centimeters, so our delta D is 10 centimeters, which we'll record on the delta D column. Now, attach the pulley so that it hangs over the end of the table. Then tie one end of the string to the glider and the other to the weight bucket. Thread the string over the pulley and hold the glider in place at the other end of the track. Set the flag width to one centimeter, press the function button to V sub zero does not equal zero, and then use the digits button to select seconds. For the next part, you'll be using the stopwatch to track the total time from release to when the glider passes through the second photo gate. Release the glider, allowing the weight bucket to pull down on the string and pull the glider across the track. Stop the timer and stopwatch after it passes through the second photo gate. The timer will show the time interval between photo gates. We measured 0.18 seconds. Now, record that number in the delta T column and record the time on the stopwatch in the total time column. With these values, you can determine the second velocity of the glider by dividing delta D by delta T. Using the equation for actual acceleration on your data sheet, determine the acceleration of the glider using the weight of the bucket. Now you can compare the calculated acceleration to the experimental acceleration of the glider. Also note that because we used a stopwatch, there is a possibility for human error. What we've learned from this experiment is that the more massive an object, the more force it needs to move or be stopped. This is why larger vehicles need more stopping distance, or why it's more difficult to push a boulder up a hill than a beach ball. Okay, that's a wrap on the air track apparatus. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next experiment. And if you have an idea for an experiment you'd like to see, comment below. Until next time, have fun learning.